I want you to turn in your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 7 and we'll be reading together verses 1 to 9. 2 Kings chapter 7, reading from verse 1 to 9 and then we'll jump 16 to 18. Elisha replied, Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says about this time tomorrow. A seer of finest flour will sell for a shekel and two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. The officer on whose arm the king was leaning said to the man of God, Look, even if the Lord should open the floodgates of heaven, the heavens, could this happen? You will see it with your own eyes, answered Elisha, but you will not eat any of it. Now there were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. They said to each other, why stay here until we die? If we say we'll go into the city, the famine is there, and we will die. And if we stay here, we will die. So let's go over to the camp of the Armenians and surrender. If they spare us, we live. If they kill us, then we die. At dusk, they got up and went to the camp of the Armenians. When they reached the edge of the camp, no one was there. For the Lord had caused the Armenians to hear the sound of chariots and horses of a great army, so that they had said to one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired the Hittites and the Egyptian kings to attack us. So they got up and fled in the dusk and abandoned their tents and their horses and donkeys. They left the camp as it was and ran for their lives. The men who had leprosy reached the edge of the camp, entered one of the tents and ate and drank. Then they took silver, gold, and clothes and went off and hid themselves and hid them. They returned and entered another tent and took some things from it and hid them also. Then they said to each other, what we are doing is, is, is not right. This is the day of good news and we are keeping it to ourselves. If we wait until daylight, punishment will overtake us. Let us go at once and report this to the royal palace. Verse 16. Then the people went out and plundered the camp of the Armenians. So a seer of the finest flour sold for a shekel, and two seers of barley sold for a shekel, as the Lord had said. Now the king had put the officer on whose arm he leaned in charge of the gate, and the people trampled him in the gateway, and he died, just as the man of God had foretold when the king came down to his house. It happened that the man of God had said to the king, about this time tomorrow, a seer of finest flour will sell for a shekel, and two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. This morning, by the grace of God, I'll be speaking to you on what I've titled The Power of a Prophetic Word. The Power of a Prophetic Word. The city, of, the city in Samaria was under siege. It was shut up for some time. Nobody was going in, nobody was going out. It was surrounded by the Syrian or Armenian army. Famine 
had fallen upon the people to the extent that horrible things were happening. There was no food in the city. People were starving. They resorted to eating donkeys. A donkey's herd became a delicacy. In one case, two women ate a baby. Cannibalism had set in. It was a national disaster. In a similar way, Zambia has been a nation under siege. Our economy was collapsing. We could not service our debts. The cost of living was skyrocketing. The local currency was depreciating every day. Violence was a normal occurrence. Freedom of speech, democratic space, and freedom of movement was curtailed. Zambia was under siege. In this scenario, in Samaria, God servant Elisha prophesied and said, tomorrow a seer of finest flour will be sold at the gates. Barley will be sold at the gates. He prophesied a turnaround of the economy. To the amazement of the people, the prophecy was fulfilled. In the last few days, we have also witnessed the fulfillment of the prophetic word that was given on 1st August. We have witnessed a change of leadership. That we are starting afresh. That change is here. And so this morning, I want to share with you on the power of a prophetic word. There are four things that we are going to share. The first one is the word of God for starting afresh. The word of God for starting afresh. Elisha, the prophet spoke in this helpless, hopeless death situation that tomorrow flour will be sold at the gate. Barley will be sold at the gate. The gate will be opened. The economy is going to change. God's deliverance always begins with a prophetic word. It could be a scripture, it could be a rhema word, it could be a phrase, it could be a sentence from a sermon. Elisha declared the word of God that in a space of 24 hours, the siege will be lifted. There shall be a market day at the gate. Wheat and barley shall be sold at the usual cost. In a similar way, 1st August 2020, I announced to you that I did not come to preach, but to prophesy. I prophesied change, a fresh start in a situation of uncertainty, of tension and hopelessness. I prophesied that the month of August is a game changer, that change is coming. I want you to understand that a prophecy is God's declaration of what he intends to do. A prophecy is an announcement of his plan. A prophecy
prophecy is a revelation of his will. Therefore, God's will for Zambia is for us to start afresh. God's plan for Zambia is for us to start afresh. God's intention for Zambia is that we need to start afresh. And I want to declare to you that God's plan for you as an individual is to start afresh. That is God's will for you in this month of August that you start afresh. God is saying to us that we have entered, we are in a season of starting afresh. So we need to embrace the word. We need to listen with expectation. We need to run with this word. We may not understand how we are going to start afresh. We may not know how it's going to happen. But we need to embrace the word. The second thing I want to share with you is the officer's response to the word of God. The king's aid's response to the word of God. The king's aid responded in unbelief to the prophetic word. As far as he was concerned, this thing could not happen. It was impossible. It was too good to be true. The situation was far gone. That is why he asks in verse 2, Look, even if the Lord should open the floodgates of the heavens, could this thing happen? He questioned the prophetic word. Some prophecies and preachings are just too good to be true. Sometimes when you hear a prophecy, it sounds like wishful thinking. When I announced the prophetic word on 1st August, it was received with mixed feelings. Some doubted the word. Others dismissed the word. They wondered how could change come when the situation on the ground favored the status quo. Others feared for my life. Others feared for bread of life. What will happen after the elections? The word unsettled others who went to social media and attacked us. The newspapers also found interest in this subject. Some ran to television to discredit the prophetic word. Sometimes we become focused on the problem that unbelief sets in. Even when God speaks, we fail to receive the word. Sometimes we are influenced by negative people speaking to us. We have looked at the problem for too long. And we have concluded it cannot change. When Sarah received the word that she was going to have a son, she laughed and 
question the world. How can a woman of 90 years whose womb is dead give birth to a son? This is preposterous. It cannot happen. But the word of God proved her wrong. She conceived and had a son and named him Isaac, which means laughter. God can do anything. He can bring change in Zambia. He can bring change in your life. He can change your circumstances. He can turn around your situation. He can turn your darkness into light, your sorrow into joy, and your night into day. The third thing that we see is the fulfillment of the prophetic word. Verses 3 to 16. After the word was released by Elisha, God immediately went to work. He had given his word by this time tomorrow, there was no time to waste. Within the word of prophecy is the power to fulfill the word. God is true to his word. He watches his word to perform it. I want you to see, beloved, that God knew where the fine flower and Bali was. It was in the enemy's camp. God knew where the answer was. The answer was down the road. I want to submit to you today that God knows where your finances are. God knows where your husband is. God knows where your wife is. God knows where your job is. God knows where your business is. God knows where your promotion is. God knows where your fruitfulness is. God knows where your destiny is. God caused the Syrian army to hear the sound of a great army. They heard the sound of horses and chariots. They concluded that Israel had hired reinforcements. They ran away in fear. They left everything behind. Tents full of flour. Tents full of barley. Tents full of clothes, silver and gold. The Bible says the wealth of the wicked is stored for the righteous. Your enemy will flee with no one pursuing. God can cause you to win a battle without doing anything. The enemy fled with no one chasing. May your enemies flee from you. I want you to see something that blessed my heart. Deliverance came through the lepers. Deliverance came through the lepers. Change will come from unexpected sources. The weak and the despised. Deliverance came from unexpected sources. The lepers, four of them. Somebody was sharing with me about the election. He said, you know, one of the things that was unusual about these elections was that deliverance came from the youth.
I said to him, yes, I saw them on lines. I saw them wearing graduation gowns. What were they, what were they protesting? Deliverance came from the weak. Some of you are looking for deliverance from the wrong places. Your deliverance is coming. From where you least expect. The lepers spoke to themselves and said, why stay here and die? Then they said, they reasoned among themselves. If we stay here, we die. If we go to the camp, there is famine there. We'll also die. Let us go to the Syrian army. If they give us food, we shall live. But if they kill us, we shall die. They did three things. And if you want change in your life, you need to do those three things. What are they? Number one, they made a decision. Decision. Your decision today will determine what will happen tomorrow. If you are going to change things, you need to decide. Ask the question if we stay here, we shall die. We shall die. If you stay in that marriage, you will die. If you stay in that church, you will die. If you stay in that business, you will die. If you stay in that employment, you will die. I was preaching somewhere. And I made this comment. I said, you know, if you are married to a man and he comes home at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., he beats you up, never gives you money. He goes every day. You go through that routine. Listen to me. Why stay there and die? You are saying, Bishop, you are now advocating Divorce. Oh no, I'm not. I'm just saying, why stay there and die? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. People are dying in marriages. People are dying in employment. The second thing they did was they exercised their faith. Faith is taking a risk. Faith is stepping out. They said, if we die, we die. But if they give us food, we shall live. Until you are willing to leave your comfort zone, you will not see change. Thirdly, what did they do? They exercised courage. The will to act. A lot of people believe in their head. A lot of people have plans, but then they don't act those plans. They don't show courage. Are you hearing me? I've often told you in this church, if your mother is living with you, beat, abusing your wife, and telling her all sorts of things, she's the one controlling the house, Listen to me. Don't be those kinds of husbands or man who say, hey, my wife, let us pray my mother away. Let us pray for her that she may live. And you are busy praying and binding your mother, but she's still there. The more you bind her, the more she oppresses your wife. Listen, you are the head of the house. Your wife, your mother is in your house. So demonstrate courage. Face your mother. 
And like one of our uh, medical doctors in Chipata, the mother used to stop her from watching the hour of blessing in her house. And she, he was active in the youth at campus. And he was posted to Chipata. The mother went to visit. And the mother told him, switch off your TV. You can't watch the hour of blessing. The young guy got up. He says, mom, you are forgetting something. This is my house. It is not your house. Are you hearing me? She said, this is my house. I watched the hour of blessing and used to stop me to go to church to the, uh, to the blessing, uh, to, to, the, uh, to the bread of life. But here, I'm singing in the praise team and I'll go anytime. This is my house, it's not your house. And that's how he left the TV on and walked away. The mother was forced to watch the hour of blessing for the first time. And as I was preaching, I touched on her problem. She was living with unforgiveness for years. She got convicted. She knelt down. She prayed with me, asked God to forgive her. And when the son came, she said, I'm so sorry. I want to apologize. This bishop of yours, he has blessed me. demonstrate courage for things to change. They went to the camp and when they got there they discovered that the camp was empty. The camp was deserted. There was no one around. They helped themselves to food. They had not eaten for days. They were eating, eating. Then after that, they looked around. They saw clothes. They saw silver. They saw gold. They began to run. Take some. Hide. Come back. Take this. Hide. Come back. Take this. Hide. Then one of them said, what we are doing is not good. Let us go and share the good news. They went to the palace. They told the king's servants who came with an old old horse which was almost dying and they plundered the place. The people came. They plundered the place. People were confused. They were running with food. They were running with gold. It was a plunder. That day, they opened the gates. They started selling their stuff. They started selling their, their, their fine flour. They started selling the barley. So within 24 hours, the word of God was fulfilled. There was a miracle. There was a turnaround. There was a turnaround. There was a turnaround. In the last few days, we have witnessed the siege come to an end in Zambia. The prophetic word was fulfilled. The people elected a new leader. And we are witnessing a fresh start, a new beginning. Civility and stability is coming back to Zambia. Zambia can now have a fresh start. After many years of brutality, cardalism, and lawlessness, The economy is showing signs of starting afresh. This past week, the kwacha has been appreciating. From 22 kwacha, it is now at 15 kwacha, 8 and where. People who were keeping dollars in their homes were running to banks to change the dollars. The mighty dollar started going down against the kwacha. 
What can you say that is starting afresh? What can you say that is change coming? What can you say? God is at work. The word is being fulfilled. It's not by mighty, nor by power, but by the spirit of the living God. Somebody give praise to God. I was watching ZNBC and I saw things I'd never seen before. Bus stops are now clear of cadres. Markets are now clear of cadres. Somebody said, I can now breathe. There is change that is coming to Zambia. And you cannot stop it. The prophetic word has been fulfilled. As I bring this to a close, I see a new Zambia. I see a prosperous Zambia. I see a Zambia where our children will prosper. Change is here. No one can stop it. Watch this space. You'll be seeing change, 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 change. Even before the man is sown into office, already change has started. Showing you that it's not about a man. It's about God. Are you hearing me? Let me conclude with my fourth point. Unbelief judged. Verse 17 and 18. As the people were pushing for spots to sell their flower and barley at the gates, the king's head was put in charge of the market. As people were jostling for places, he fell down. They trampled upon him. He died. He saw the flower. He saw the barley. But he never ate it. He had questioned the word of God. He had doubted the word of God. He had disputed the word of God. The same word was fulfilled in his life. You will see it, but not eat of it. You may speak with unbelief. You may condemn the change that is coming. You may question this word of change. But hear me and hear me well. You will see it, but you will not enjoy it. Unbelief will be judged instantly and swiftly. God punishes unbelief. It is an insult to God's integrity. It amounts to saying God is a liar. Be careful how you respond to the word of God. It's better to keep quiet. People like me, I say things which I don't even understand myself. I have learned not to criticize myself. I wait. And I've seen those things being fulfilled. Are you here? The power of the prophetic word. I told a man we were ordaining in the old church. I said to him, as you have been elevated <laughs> to this position, so shall your business also go up. He looked at me. He was puzzled. How? Within three months, his business turned around to where he was able to buy himself a car, his wife a car, finish his house, do incredible things. And he has never looked up the power of the prophetic word. As I conclude, in 
this month of starting afresh, you need to embrace the word of starting afresh. You need to run with this word. You may not understand how you start afresh. But hear me and hear me well. Our God is a God of new beginnings. You are starting afresh. Zambia, 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 you are starting afresh. I see a prosperous Zambia. I see change in Zambia. No one can stop it. God can change any situation. Reverse any situation. In one day, he can turn your darkness into light. Your sorrow into joy. Your night into day. Your disappointment into an appointment. Your testing into a testimony. Your rejection into selection. Zambia is starting afresh. You are starting afresh. Believe the word and run with it. Stand on your feet and let's pray for a little while as we close the service. Pray after me and say, Father, I thank you for your prophetic word of starting a phrase. Let your word deliver me from every stagnation, captivity, and failure in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to pray that prayer. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the prophetic word of starting a phrase. Let your word deliver me from every stagnation, captivity, and failure in Jesus' name. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Pray this prayer and say, every yoke of delay over my starting, af over my starting afresh be destroyed by the blood of Jesus. Every yoke of delay over my starting afresh break Break, break in Jesus' name. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. Every yoke of delay over my starting afresh. Break in Jesus' name. Break in Jesus' name. Break in Jesus' name. Every yoke of delay over my starting afresh. Be destroyed by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Say every dream idea, vision, word I have conceived of starting afresh begin to manifest in Jesus' name. O oh God of the suddenlies, honor your prophetic word by granting me a 24-hour miracle in Jesus' name. Lift up your voice and begin to pray that prayer. O oh God of the suddenly. Oh God of the suddenly. Oh God of the suddenly. Honor your prophetic word. Honor your prophetic word. By granting me a 24 hour miracle. In Jesus name. Honor oh God your word. Honor your word. Grant me a 24 hour miracle. I want you to push in the spirit. Push in the spirit. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed i decree and declare that in the month of august you are starting afresh i decree and declare that every power that has kept you in captivity that has kept you in bondage is being broken now in jesus name by the blood of jesus every yoke that has been keeping you, delaying your starting afresh. We break it in the name of Jesus. I prophesy to you that your name 
will be remembered in high places. I decree and declare that you shall receive a phone call that will change your life. I decree and declare that you walk in favor. God will favor you in the morning. God will favor you in the afternoon. God will favor you in the evening. I decree and declare that every curse over your life is broken. You shall be visible. Your star shall shine. You will not see shame. You will not be ignored. You will be announced in strange places. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your hands and begin to thank the Lord. Begin to thank the Lord. Thank him for starting afresh. 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 It is done. God will make a way for you. Where there will be no way. Opportunities are opening before you. Doors are opening before you. Walk in the favor of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the fulfillment of the prophetic word. Thank you that Zambia is starting afresh. Afresh with a new president. Afresh with a new cabinet. Afresh with new leaders. Receive thanksgiving for all this. We believe that as Zambia has started afresh, we as individuals are also starting afresh. Thank you for the doors. Thank you for the opportunities that you are opening before us. We give you praise. And now, may the anointing of starting afresh be upon you. May you be blessed going in and coming in. May you be favored wherever you go. May your star shine. May it be well with you. Now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.